In Virginia, there are over a million households that rely on private water supplies for their drinking water. Uh, and we in Virginia Cooperative Extension saw an opportunity to provide uh, sort of a one-stop shop for education materials for those folks to help them learn about how to maintain and care for their systems and also provide testing for folks so they can uh, learn what is in their drinking water and whether it's safe to drink and if there are issues with the water, how they might treat that water. Some of the more serious health-related concerns like bacterial contamination, um, there is no symptom or, or any way for a homeowner to tell unless they're routinely testing. Um, and so that unless they're kind of aware of the problem and keeping track of things, they won't know that there's a problem with their water and there's a possibility that someone will get sick. I feel it's important that homeowners get educated about their water supply, how they're going to use it, what they need to do to maintain it, what they can expect. It's a lot more than, than having just your just drilling and leaving. You have to be active in taking care of your water supply long after I leave. We recommend that um, a homeowner check their well themselves every year and every 10 years have it um, inspected by a water well professional. We've just gotten these samples in from some homeowners um, and so we're going to do the analysis for coliform bacteria and E. coli. The reason we test for coliform is that it's an indicator organism. It's actually harmless, but if we find it in a water source, it means that there's a pathway for more dangerous bacteria to get there. If we have a sample that turns up positive or present for coliform, that's when we do a follow-up test for E. coli and we see if, if that's there as well. So um, we want to have about 92 to 100 milliliters um, to actually test. So the homeowners are asked to fill up the bottle completely, so we just pipette out the um, excess. We add um, Coal Alert, which is a growth medium for the E. coli. Incubate sample for 24 hours before testing. And then um, after the 24 hours is up, we'll be able to look at the bottles. If they're yellow, we know that coliform is present. And if they're yellow and they fluoresce, we know that coliform and E. coli are present. Mm -hmm. And as we can see, um, because all of the samples are yellow, that means that in these four samples, um, we do have, you know, all present for, for total coliform. Um, and the next step is actually going to be um, to use this UV light um, to see which of the samples will fluoresce and therefore which of the samples have E. coli present as well. So we can cut the lights. Yeah. So as you can see, we have, um, sorry, we, as you can see, we have four samples here. Um, and the two on the right here um, are positive for E. coli or are present. And these two are not fluorescing and therefore they're just um, just present for total coliform and, and absent for E. coli. Okay,